Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Writer's Corner. This is a, a different corner. I should have books and things behind me. <laughs> Actually, there's jars of herbs. Makes for quite a good backdrop, though. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about dialogue in your book, in your novel, because it's quite a tricky thing to get right. Even uh, some more renowned, famous uh, stories that have become films without mentioning any names can have some very ropey dialogue. And I'm used to writing um, what you might call self-development books um, uh, for the last 13 years or so. But the last three years, I've wrote a novel a year, uh, Negative Linear, Quantum Verse, Starman. It's very different sort of writing to write a novel, to write a story with characters and dialogue to the, um, in regards to the books that uh, I was used to writing, comfortable writing, with exercises to follow um, in order to develop uh, the self spiritually. So when I came to write in um, the first book, Negative Linear, uh, and I first came to dialogue, I was thinking, okay, I can feel what the characters are saying and what they want to say, and I know where the story is moving, where it's going. But why, when I read it back, is the dialogue really clunky and artificial sounding? Not like real life. What is it that I'm missing? And I couldn't quite work it out because it's only subtle. It's a subtle shift that needs to happen to make the dialogue authentic rather than how you tend to write dialogue. Uh, I was listening to um, uh, an audio book of uh, Hemingway. I think it was a movable feast. The um, the book that Hemingway wrote that basically is, um, scholars have said it's uh, him in his earlier days uh, as as a as a young guy, a young writer, first starting out. And there's lots of. Uh, even though it's a story, it's, there's lots of uh, advice for writers in there, advice that he was given that comes through the characters that they actually um, he actually speaks about in A Movable Feast. Lots of great tips for writing in that book, I found, um, that just come through the dialogue. And one of the things that I read in there, I heard on an audio book, I read it a long time ago when I was too young. I should read it again now. Now I'm older. But I listened to the audiobook in the car not so long ago. And he said with dialogue, when writers writing dialogue, it's not so much what you say, it's what you don't say. It's what you miss out in normal conversation. And so I thought, okay, that's interesting. Let's be mindful of conversations that I have with people and see what I miss out it's not as black and white. It's not as um, simple as you might write dialogue. What we tend to do is we tend to uh, present a phrase or an idea that goes on the back of someone else's idea. So we're, we tend to come from our own point of view rather than just answering a question. We tend to put forward our own view on top of a view or a question coming from someone else. That's how we tend to talk. That's how we talk authentically and so that's how we should write. Let me give you an example. If I was to be talking to somebody about the weather and the person comes into the shop and they say oh it's a cold weather isn't it? Um, and then I was to say yes it is cold weather. Oh and then the, uh, the person says oh I had to put my central heating on this morning and then I end up by saying uh, that's very wise I think because it is cold outside. We don't talk like that but to the novice writer that might be how you feel like you should write it. But we don't tend to answer questions. We tend to put forward our views on top of questions and on top of views. So the same um, uh, conversation would go something like this. It's um, really cold outside. And then I would say, I had to put my central heating on this morning. I got out of bed and uh, my feet was cold the moment they hit the floor. And then the first person might say, yeah, um, I think I might have to go and buy some logs for the fire. The conversation is kind of being answered one way and the other. There are questions and there are answers, but they come in the form of personal viewpoints rather than it's cold outside, 
yes it is we, we just don't talk like that you watch yourself in conversation even when somebody asks a question we tend to put forward a view rather than just answering the question in a black and white way and if you can start to write like this as we actually talk in an authentic way then your dialogue isn't clunky your dialogue sounds right and it is right so that's the first thing that I uh, wanted to put forward. When I realised that, it's not so much what we say, it's what we don't say. And I went back to what I'd already written. It was very easy then. It was very, very easy to, um, to put it right. And I was watching a film the other day, actually, The Fly. And I love The Fly with Jeff Goldblum. It's one of my favourite films. But I did notice in certain areas, the dialogue goes a little clunky. Um, there's words and there's phrases that the whole of the scene would work better if the phrase was taken out. And this is an exercise that you can do. Watch um, someone else's work and see how it could be improved. Not in an arrogant way, just in a way of thinking, would that be better if that word wasn't there, if that sentence wasn't there? There was this um, scene, for example, where um, the editor-in-chief of Gina Davis's character uh basically wants to get back with her because uh, they used to have a relationship uh and he's still got a key for the apartment and is in the shower when she comes home and she's like petrified she's thinking uh, someone's broken into my shower and then she realizes uh that uh it's her old boyfriend and the ending scene uh, the ending part of that scene uh the chap says i could be in your life a little bit more if you like and she goes no and he says, oh, why not? And then she says, give me my key back. Um, the no didn't need to be there. It would be far better if, for example, uh, the one character said, uh, maybe I could be in your life a little bit more. And then Gina Davis's character just says, give me my key back. That would, or, or even better than that, Gina Davis's character could just say key and, and put a hand out. I could be in your life um, a little bit more, if you like. Key. That would be far better. Um, so, yeah, look at how you can trim out words to make the conversation more authentic, completely authentic. Okay, I hope uh, those two points that I've raised there have been helpful in your writing practice. I'll do a link to Read Z in the description because that's a really helpful channel. Um, and I'll be doing more of these Writer's Corner really, really soon. Thanks for listening and happy writing. Bye for now.